Hello everyone and welcome back to Taito Ecology Biodomes of Plenty, our personal challenge to try to add in one of every type of animal into each of the current biodomes in Taito Ecology before the release of the dinosaur biodome expansion that will be coming to Taito Ecology sometime in the near future. And we are back with a little bit of startling news. So it is our one year anniversary here in the biodome. Woo! Let's collect those energy and those coins as our reward. And I thought in transferring our biodome uh, from my laptop that we use to record biodomes of plenty in Taiwan to my computer that maybe we had an error of some kind. Maybe for some weird reason, everything disappeared and the entire biodome was empty. And I was like, oh no, I guess our biodome must have somehow, uh, somehow like glitched. And I was kind of a little worried, but like, oh, that's okay. I'll just go grab the new, the save file again and reload it again and see what happens. But then guys, I noticed our biodome is not entirely empty. It actually does have some ants and it has some mushrooms and it has some pods and you know what that means <laughs> we have killed everything everything in here is dead i can't believe how this has happened i don't know how this has happened we left it running for a year and i was totally confident i was like the foxes will handle the pikas the pikas will have plenty of things to eat no no and excuse me pika the pika are dead the bamboo is dead i don't understand what happened where did we go wrong i only left this place for maybe a year in game or however long we set it it's been two years, but everything is dead. <laughs> I can't believe this. I think we had too many pika, you guys. I think they ate everything. And we had a beautiful bamboo forest. We even had some cute little pandas. Oh, dear. All right. I, I don't know what to do other than to try to restart our entire biodome. This is so sad. I've, I've not suffered a complete... Oh, the circle of life. Yes, thank you. I have not suffered from having everything die like that in so long. I just, I have no idea what happened. I don't have any explanations. I don't have any justifications. All I can do is just apologize and stare at a barren, empty wasteland with nothing but mushrooms. Thank you very much. Nothing but mushrooms and ants and a few moths. <laughs> in in horror so yeah this happened guys i don't know how to deal with it other than to just start anew uh, maybe i shouldn't have been left responsible for this place after all but we're gonna try again because i do want to have some fun continuing on with our biodomes of plenty challenge together it is quite fun there are so many animals and so many different ecosystem effects that we can learn about through playing with taito ecology and i think it's a pretty fitting subject to continue to peck away at because we are the pixel biology channel and we try to learn about the wildlife keep in mind taito ecology is so awesome and it introduces so many science aspects it may not be the best place in the world to get a complete idea of what you can expect for a, an ecosystem because this is a closed ecosystem it's in a dome we're the ones in charge that's not normally how a planet works but it does have a great way of displaying your cycle of consumers and producers your predators your decomposers all of those guys mixed together and what happens when you put too many hungry hungry pika mouths down they eat all the vegetation and then everything dies because the pika die the last thing to go was actually so it looks like looks like down here what happened was that the mushrooms started dying and the mushrooms dying mean that the pika resorted to eating the mushrooms and then after the pika ran out of mushrooms they started dying and starving and so once they all died then the red foxes had nothing left to eat and eventually the red foxes ended up dying off so <laughs> That is the tragic sad tale of what happened in this biodome and we're gonna go ahead and try something new this time So usually we start this tale by starting with a whole bunch of our itty bitty teeny tiny herbivores Who will run around and they will frolic and eat amongst all of the beautiful plants we have put down They will have tons of babies and then we will end up 
constantly trying to keep those babies from overrunning our world and eating all of the plants by introducing a carnivore or an omnivore. But I think this time we're actually going to switch from the pika who appear to have a ridiculously fast breeding system. In fact, if I can find where is, let's see, I need to find, I, I hang on. All right, there we go, my bio notes. Let's see how quickly those little pika actually reproduce. There's different levels for how fast something will reproduce in this game. So they, they reproduce like on a scale of four out of five. So pretty, pretty fast at having their, their little babies. If we go for something like the jungle fowl, the jungle fowl could also be food to foxes, but they reproduce a little bit slower. So hopefully they would focus a little bit more on eating insects. They consume grasses, grains, small bugs, plant and insect matter they find on the ground and they might actually breed quickly but slower than the pika and because they'll also eat uh, a whole bunch of the insects they might be a little bit less pressure on the plants so the plants will have a chance to really get their roots down they'll have a chance to start spreading around the place because it's going to take a long time before our bamboo is ready to pollinate and have babies of its own and you can start seeing that really fun sort of cycle and pyramid of trying to build an ecosystem it's kind of like trying to make a big puzzle piece fit together and I adore it. It is one of my favorite things to study and it is far more complex in real life than you could ever really simulate but I adore Taito Ecology for giving it a good go. So I think instead of putting down pika we're going to add in one of my favorite animals. We are going to be adding in the jungle fowl. Yes, the red jungle fowl is actually what we have modern day chickens descended from. So red jungle fowl are the ancient ancestors of chickens and they are listed as insectivores here. So let's go ahead and make sure we have more insects, like a whole bunch of the earthworms. Let's get a bunch of earthworms in the ground. There we go. So we've got a big pile of earthworms over here. Let's make sure we have tons of ants. Thankfully, ants also have a really quick reproductive cycle. I don't know if they have a reproductive cycle here. Yeah, they do. They, so they reproduce very, very quickly. A queen ant can repopulate her, her nest very fast. Let's see. So let's see if there's anything. Yeah, reproduction. Many ant colonies. Oh, yay, we earned eight Taito coins for our tiny pile of mushrooms and worms. <laughs> Reproduction. Many ant colonies rely on a single female called the queen to produce offspring for the entire colony. Some colonies have more than one queen and others have female workers that are also capable of reproducing. Biodome ants reproduce at a constant rate and won't move their territory once it's placed. How long does an ant live? It depends on its job. After reaching maturity, male ants rarely live more than a few weeks. Female worker ants can live for a few months to a few years years. Can you imagine that? Seeing a little ant go around cleaning a nursery or gathering food or defending the entrance or just following her sisters in the line off to collect something and doing that over and over and over and over and over again. Do, do they sleep? Do ants sleep? You guys, that's our pixel biology question of the day. Do ants sleep? I'm sure that they do, but I don't know anything about how ants sleep. This is a brilliant question. Yay, curiosity. All right, anyway, continuing on. Queen ants have been known to live for over 30 years. Colonies can sustain many generations of ants, even if the ants themselves have brief lives. And that's really interesting. And also keep in mind when we're talking ant, that could talk about like, any anything any like that's just generalized ant there are hundreds and hundreds of species of ants leaf cutters are some of my favorite to research there's these really amazing burrowing ants in africa that have very complex beautiful uh cat like very complex caverns that they make and i could go on and on about ants but anyway <laughs> the point is they breed pretty quickly and they do clean up the detritus, which is going to be all of the dead matter. So they're pretty important to clean up after the things that die, like the little animals that end up passing away or the trees that end up passing away. Let's come down here and we're gonna make like a little goji berry garden because I wanna make sure that our chickens can survive. What? The what and the bees? There's something seedy about these fruits because fruits have seeds. Yay, so we are unlocking more achievements. 
Uh, oh, and I apologize if the game looks a little bit weird. I'm having trouble getting it in the proper resolution, just FYI, but I don't think it'll be too bad for you guys. I'm so excited we're gonna add jungle fowl. But the red jungle fowl is actually the species that chickens are based off of. So that is one of the reasons that I really love them. All right, well, we'll, we'll wait and get some bamboo over here. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put in more bamboo here. I'm putting down the bamboo, even though chickens aren't going to eat bamboo, because hopefully by putting it down now, we'll encourage it to hurry up and start breeding. And I will also put down, because I think I read that they'll eat the grass, so let's put down the fairy grass. And let me double check to see how quickly the Himalayan fairy grass reproduces. Max rate, A+. Plus. Hopefully it will spread out into a beautiful grassy carpet across this entire cliffside. I can't believe we ended up losing everything. We Everything was gone. And that was a result of the pika overrunning everything. Of having a tiny, fast breeding herbivore that just bred out of control and ended up ended up destroying everything and eating everything. So that was kind of amazing. All right, so the moral of the story there is we probably should have had more predators to keep them in check. And that can be a little hard to wrap your head around sometimes, but look at it this way. Because we didn't keep a few individual pika in the mouths of more foxes or in the mouths of some hungry snow leopards, we ended up losing all of them. So the entire species went extinct because we didn't have a few individual pika getting eaten by some of the foxes or eaten by some of the snow leopards or the dole or the wolves, the other predators that we could add into this biodome. So even though on an individual level, it would really suck as a little pika to have been eaten by a fox, on a group level, it may have been really important if there were too many pika. But if you have too many foxes, then you're going to lose all of the pika species because then the foxes out eat the pika. So you can see where it becomes a big, gigantic balancing act. But all right, I think we have several groups of ants, which I'm pretty happy about. We have some of the grasses. I put down some goji berries, which I don't think are very fast breeding. Yeah, their reproduction is very, very slow, but the jungle fowl will mostly, mostly stick to eating ants and we can put down tons of little groups of ants, so that should be okay. And I'll put down some groups of earthworms just in case they like those guys too. As soon as I can, go little Taito Ecology, energy points, go! <laughs> there we go, and I'll add in some worms just because we can. And let's go ahead, and now we're going to add in my favorite as soon as we have enough energy. <laughs> The red jungle fowl. I am so excited. This is gonna be this is gonna be quite thrilling. All right. Whoop. There we go. Oh, I got a little screenshot. Didn't even mean to do that. All right. Let's put it down. And okay, got back up a little bit. Okay. What about right over, right? Okay. There. Ah! <laughs> Did you guys hear that? <laughs> I love them! I love them! I have such a soft spot in my heart and soul for chickens. I have no idea why. It has just been this way since day one with me. I've always adored chickens so much and now we have them! We have them inside of our biodome and hopefully they will hurry up and have many happy healthy little babies. I'm hoping that we'll end up with a lot of chicks. Taito Ecology actually had an update a while ago you guys that brought in baby animals which is really cute isn't that just so awesome to think about so we might end up seeing little baby chicks appearing they might start spreading oh look at you are you gonna come eat these worms i think he's gonna come oh nope it kind of looks like a little nest doesn't it <laughs> that's so fun all right well let's put down some more things because i've got the energy for it um i wonder if we should put in well i don't know if we have enough of the other plant species <laughs> to support more populations of other types of animals. But we'll get some joint fur in so it can start spreading. And then when we come back, it'll be really fun to see which species have prospered. There's literally no predators for these chickens and I'm pretty sure it would take them a little bit of effort, like a little bit of effort to really start pecking away at the ant colonies. So maybe I should add in one or two, sorry, I bumped into the other zone and it freaked out. Maybe I should add in one or two more like chicken groups, a couple more chicken colonies, and we're just going to cover the entire area in chickens. That may have to be the direction we go in for a little while. 
<laughs> but it's kind of like gardening running a biodome and uh, I think it'd be I think it'd be kind of fun so we'll go ahead and add in one more let's do where oh where are my beautiful chickens oh I bet they're over here because we've unlocked them so there's the red jungle fowl and like I mentioned earlier the reason I keep calling them chickens is that the modern day chicken is actually descended from domesticated red jungle fowl hopefully these guys will fare better than the poor the poor pika and the poor foxes the foxes just were not enough to be able to take the pika out and and keep their population in balance and we'll come back and check in on everybody in a little bit. We just have to give everything a little bit more time to start spreading. Uh, I don't think the hawk moth needs to be down. We need to give everything a little bit of time to kind of recover from the overzealous attention of all of those pika. We'll put down some balsam over there. We'll just kind of sprinkle a whole bunch of the plants around the place. And maybe with the pika gone, some of the plants will have a chance to spread and they'll have a chance to really take root before we introduce some of our herbivores. So let me put in one big beautiful wood apple tree and then we will leave our curious and hungry little jungle fowl to their fate and we'll come back and check in on them next time so I hope you guys enjoyed uh, if you guys have completely destroyed your biodomes do please let me know because you can feel a little bit silly oh are you coming for these worms are you coming for these worms whoop 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 Oh, oh, it's kind of hard to get in here. Ah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Somebody wanted to eat some of these worms. That's so cute. I love chickens so much. But all right, if you have completely wiped out your biodome, do let me know because it's been a long time since I have literally killed everything in a biodome. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.